So, tonight is really special. I know we are all still recovering from last night's film, The Substance. When I saw this film, I went through so many different emotions. Uh, it brought me back to uh, going down to, to, Ken, you know, to Kensington Market and then going to, uh, to uh, Dragon City and going into the DVD shops and finding Stephen Chow movies, coming home, watching something like Out of the Dark and being like, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. Something that made me laugh, that made me cry, both out of empathy, out of joy, out of terror. Uh, this movie has every emotion possible and was made by some really incredible filmmakers. Uh, I, I, has any of you seen uh, the film Detention? Not Joseph Kahn's Detention, but John Hughes' Detention. Has anyone seen that? Thank you. You're not going to be ready for the total shift that he makes in this movie, but it's wonderful, it's magical, and please put your hands together to welcome John Chu and Jim Starting out on this project, it was the world that came first, the idea of a ghost community. How did the story begin? Yeah, you know, it was actually uh, had something to do with my first feature, Detention. Because as you know, Detention was uh, my, my first feature, which is a, a horror film, it's a psycho horror film and also a historical drama, which is super, super serious. Yes. But I, uh, most of my previous work when I was making short films are mostly comedy so it's really difficult for me uh, not to make fun of anything when i'm making a movie so it was like uh, the whole process uh, when we were making detention with jingo it was like a, such an intense experience for both of us and uh, i remember uh, uh, not wanting to see any movie after making detention for a while and there's one day my producer was like, uh, dragged me to a pre premiere event for another horror film. And uh, as someone who grew up as a horror film audience, I, I uh, usually, uh, it's really hard for me to be scared by any horror film. So whenever I'm watching horror film, I was like uh, distracted or falling asleep or like uh, noticing something else. And there was, suddenly there was one scene I remember that there was the, a female ghost with the long hair covering her face and she was like crawling in the toilet, in a public toilet, which is super dirty. And it's covered with, with dirt and dust and shit. And she was just like trying so hard to, to twist his, 
her arms and body just to scare me as the audience, but I'm not scared. So to, I, I suddenly feel super sad because it's like a, a, an effortless uh, effort. It's like a, you know that it's fruitless, but she's still doing it. She's still still doing like a, everything, trying to scare me, and I was I was like thinking in my mind saying something like, okay, you can stop, you can stop. I, I know you're trying really hard, I know how hard it is, but you can stop, you can stop here. Then I suddenly, I think I was crying watching that scene. <laughs> because it was so fruitless, but she was like putting so much effort. And that gave me the idea of like, uh, I remember that after the premiere, uh, my producer and I was like smoking outside the cinema, and I was like, Let's make a film about ghosts uh, trying to scare people. It's like the opposite of horror films, like Monster Inc. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's, the, that's where the idea comes from. <laughs> I mean, there's so much heart in the movie, though. That's what I love about it, is that it is, it, you, you appreciate not a, all the work that goes into a scare, but it, in, in a way, it also just makes you appreciate all the collaborators in any production. And so, Jingle, I want to hear from you in terms of like what were the what was your collaborative process like with John, uh, in terms of just planning your killer moves. Because <laughs> um, we, we've known each other for like years. Because um, detention is one of my um, it's a film that is really important for me. And yeah, so after a few years uh, work with John again, it makes me feel kind of awkward. Because <laughs> we're so close to each other, it's like acting in front of your brother or your father. It's like, hey, am I better right now? Better than detention? Or am I like even worse? I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, so every day, every day, and every scene, I feel like I just want to do my best. It's just just like in the movie. Like I just want to be seen. I just want to see the best. You see the best version of me. And I just want you to see the best best version of me. So yeah, I don't know. I still don't know what am I talking about right now. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much that your reaction and your la your, your laughter. I don't know. It means a lot, a lot to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it's from me. <laughs> Sometimes she's it's just inspired. imitating me. <laughs> like the, the awkward pose, poses and the, the way she talked and the way she was like crawling her back. That's pretty much me. <laughs> so whenever she said that she don't know what to do, she was just like uh, doing my like impersonation. My, my job is to observe John <laughs> on the set. Like he's he's hey he's the hey hey there right what's her name? And, and, and sometimes it's called you there, sometimes it's hey there, sometimes it's the new girl. Okay, so we he, just don't mention her name. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like he's like a guy version of the character. So I just like observe. I I look at him every day. I feel like wait, I just want to be you. <laughs> So, is it, so you, you you relate to the main character, John? Is that which? One? Yeah, I, I think that the main character is like the combination between me and Jingo, because we after detention, everything suddenly exploded for us. It's like uh, we didn't know what we do, what we did, because detention was my first feature, and it was uh, probably the biggest production for her at that time. So, uh, so like you had just jumped off the Lucky Hotel yes. and splattered and, the and we had no idea what we did and we uh, got hurt and we got uh, like, a, like a, what, what is it called, like a, uh, what was that syndrome? PTSD. PTSD is yes. one of them. <laughs> so, it was such, it's just, it was such a, such a trauma. Yeah, yeah. Imposter syndrome, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we both syndrome. were suffering from imposter syndrome for such a long time. And uh, so when I talked to Jingo about this character, it's like she immediately get that. So on set, most of my effort was 
like uh, adjusting how the rat is <laughs> because she knows completely what she's doing. Yeah, it was uh, really nice for me to be able to work with her again because she just like grew up a lot. Yeah. Before I throw to the audience, uh, I want to talk about the music. I became addicted to the soundtrack. I love the score and the decision to use this musical genre. I discovered Joanna Wang's music as well. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the soundtrack? Yeah, and uh, before the, the actual production, we actually made a, a proof of concept video like three or four years ago. And at that time, I already decided that we we're going to use big band jazz music, especially with the Scott rhythm. Yeah, so that was kind of like the, it was decided at that time. But it was really hard for Taiwan to uh, to record like a whole big band all together. That was the original idea. So at the end, we still separate some different kind of instrument. But uh, I was like really glad we keep we uh, we were able to to use this kind of music for Taiwanese production because for most of the Taiwanese films. Uh, music usually needs to be more melodramatic for the, the local audience to, to understand the, the, the emotion. So when we are trying something else, it was kind of like a little bit risky for a domestic market. But we, we did it anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and the theme song, the theme song is also called Dead Talent Society. It's by Joanna Wong. She was like a She's, she's a super talented Taiwanese singer, and uh, she made two versions of this song. One is in Mandarin, which is you, what you heard in the end credits. The other one is when the, the girl was like, a, yeah, the running, running, chasing those influencers. <laughs> yeah, those, those two versions of songs was like a got sent to us because I remember when we were making the music for the chasing scene, the final chasing scene, originally we didn't think of, think of we can put the theme song on it. We were like still trying to make different segments of music and try to see if, if it fit, but uh, we didn't get anything that's good enough. Suddenly the composer was like uh, joking about why don't you just put your on something, see what's gonna happen? It was like, it's impossible because we, we have to edit her song like in yeah. so many different places. And but we try anyway, we put it on the timeline and see how it goes and we press play. After three minutes, we were shocked, we were stunned because we didn't change a thing and it was just perfectly fit the scene. So uh, yeah, we, we were like, uh, that's one of my favorites. That, 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 that run is so cathartic and, and so fun to watch. It reminds me a bit of a, a Midnight Madness award winner, Why Don't You Play in Hell, the ending of that film. Was that an inspiration at all? Because that's also a movie about a group of people that are like filmmakers doing a ridiculous production. Yeah, that's one thing. Uh, I think the, the inspiration for that climax is coming from a lot of different movies. One of them is Little Miss Sunshine. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you can understand the, the, the similarities there, it's like uh, they no longer care about if they're going to win or lose, if they're going to success or if they're going to get any kind of recognition from other people. It's they the just want to do it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's the joy of doing that thing. Yeah, it's yeah. not, and it's not, and if, yeah, if yeah. you love to do it, then it's not work anymore. Yes. <laughs> All right, questions from the audience. Right there, yes. Yeah. The significance of the giraffe to you. The significance oh, of the giraffe. You notice the giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, that was uh, uh, something that uh, for me is something fun to do when I, whenever I make a movie. movie. It's like uh, I remember it was back in 2007 when I was making one of my short films, and in that film we need some kind of a strange animal pictures throughout the film to to imply something. And we were thinking about what kind of animal when you put it there, you will feel like uh, it doesn't belong to anywhere. And giraffe was the, the decision. 
And so we decided to put it in different places of that short film, and we found it fun to do. So it became a tradition. So all my feature film, all my uh, TV you know, drama, and all my commercials, music videos, are all with a bunch of giraffe. <laughs> Thank you. You look so good tonight. Uh, and I was also wondering about the giraffes, not to like keep on bringing it up, but do you have a tally of how many giraffes you hit there? It's like uh, how many giraffes did you hide? Yeah, I think this time we probably did too much. Too, too, <laughs> yeah, did it too much? I think it was around 26 or 28 or something. You yeah. lost control. <laughs> <laughs> you had a question right beside, yes. What ghost concepts didn't make it into the film? Okay. <laughs> or, and you know what? I'm going to add to this. Will there be more adventures with these characters? Because I just love the world. So have you thought of continuing this? I have no idea. It kind of depends on Sony. <laughs> Ask Sony. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that, that the ghost's uh, party was sponsored by Sony. Yeah, actually there are a lot of like, the, the ghosts in the film are actual urban legends from Taiwan or especially, or, or, or in Asia. Yeah, so uh, we have this like a uh, encyclopedia for Taiwanese urban legend. We just like, whenever we need a ghost, we just... <laughs> Is there a particular out. favorite that you both have? It, apart from the main cast, one of the background ghosts that you're pretty proud of having in the film? Yeah, there was actually a bunch of female ghosts. They were all died in college. And that was like a famous Taiwanese urban legend. And this story is always so similar. So it's always so similar that every female ghost that died or suicide in the, the, the campus was always waiting for their lover. So uh, that story, those stories are super similar. And, I remember we were trying to make fun of that, saying that, oh, I am the origin of this, that story. No, no, you are, I am the origin. Yeah, no one can agree who the first yeah, one was. Yeah, 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 but turn out we don't have that much time, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, that's From the sequel. Script. Is there any questions? We have probably time for one more. Up here, yes, go, go, go. Yeah. What, 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 we, 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 there was two there. So we're gonna start with the highest one and then we'll go to the lowest one and that'll be it. Okay, thank you so much. The highest, yeah. I can't, we cannot see it all up there. Okay, it's okay. I have my voice, my Yeah. Thank you. As a female being, seeing that you are the right? Yeah, you're seeing. <laughs> Pretty much my family, 
And because my father always told me to become something, someone special, you need to be seen, you need to uh, make the family proud as the very Asian family stuff. And uh, I spent 40 years trying to fulfill that expectation. And I uh, had a serious burnout after making detention. So I was start, starting to think about what and what was I doing? What, what, what was I doing when I was like trying so hard to become a film director? Am I someone who want to have some kind of a film award or making a lot of money? Because in Taiwan, if you want to make money, you never, you never want to choose to become a film director. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so suddenly the meaning to make films was like it disappeared to me. So it was like a, I was like uh, experiencing a very difficult time. So making that dead talented society was like a self therapy to me. <laughs> I was like looking back to the, my life and see what was that all about. So glad you came through the other side to make this incredible film. Yeah. Please put your hands together and go. <laughs> With a QR code too, please stand and you have a chance to win a trip to Japan, South Korea, or Morocco. Thank you so much. I'm sorry to get to everyone's questions, but we are here to do it. Thank you.